got a mega way to start the morning. A double take, pretty much. This is the first and the smaller one of the pair. What a mega, mega carb. Really pleased with that. I've got something special in the oven there. Really special. Mega old carp. So this and the scaly one that I've just put back, they were both caught fishing clear areas, nicely presented. Uh, I'm gonna get this one back, get changed because I'm bloody soaked, uh, and then I'll take you through how to find them and how to fish them effectively. What a result. When fishing for carp, I'm always looking to present my rig on as hard a bottom as possible. Now, whatever type of venue you fish, there will always be harder areas, be it gravel, be it stone or rocks, or hard compacted mud, clay, or even sand. Now, these harder areas are like dinner plates for the carp, and often they'll actually have already been fed on by the carp. It's like a ready-made dinner plate, it's clean, they don't have to sift through lots of bottom detritus to get to the food, and it's easy for us to present our rigs on it. Now there's a couple of ways to locate these clear hard areas. Now first of all and easiest is to use your eyes. If you're fishing close in, often you can see what's in front of you if the water's clear. So I'll be using my eyes, I'll be looking for gaps in the weed, I'll be looking for those shiny areas of gravel. The most common way, especially when you're casting for locating a spot, is to use a lead or a marker rod. Now this is really simple, it's a case of casting out, feeling for a drop, that's feeling the lead down through the water until it hits the, the lake bed, and then pulling it back and you can ascertain quite accurately what you're fishing over. So I'm having a little cast about in the area that I want to fish and I've just located an area of gravel. Now, by dragging the lead across it, that's really telling me what I'm fishing over and I'm getting this really sharp tapping on the tip. Yeah, and that's really clean. I've already dragged it about one rod length. And another rod length and I've just pulled off it. So what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna put a little bit of line back on and clip it up. So I'll put the line in the clip there, reel it in. I've picked my far bank marker. And I'm gonna stick that on the wrap sticks. So the drop or the way that the lead hits the bottom after it's fallen through the water and that feeding through the rod can really tell you a lot about what you're fishing over. With mono you can feel it, but with braid it's greatly exaggerated. So I recommend for your lead rod that you use braid straight to a lead because this will give you the best feeling. It will tell you whether you're fishing over coarser gravel, light stones, if it's hard with a little bit of weed over the top. Now all of these are presentable, but I'm looking for the hardest, clearest area within the swim because that will allow my rigs to operate at maximum efficiency. So I've made a couple of casts to identify my clear area. And now I'm gonna be a little bit more precise and I'm gonna try and find the best bit or the bit that I wanna fish on that clear area. And I think I wanna fish at the back, just where the silt starts to meet the gravel. And I've cast it into the silt. And now, there we go. So I'm gonna put that back in the clip there. That's really nice. Um, it's about half a rod length from where the soft stuff starts and I've got another two rod lengths of hard stuff. So my line's gonna be nice and flat. It's not gonna be kicked up over any weed and uh, the rig's gonna be presented close to the silt where the fish are happy to feed. All that remains now is to wrap it up, count the wraps and then I can get my rig out there and I know it'll be perfectly on the right spot. So you've chosen your hard clear area to fish and to be honest you can use any rig you want but you have to remember now that using something like a high pop-up, a shoddy, a stiff hinge link 
On that hard flat bottom, that will be really, really visible. It will stand out like a sore thumb. This might be the effect that you want to achieve, but if you're fishing over bait, something a little bit less conspicuous would be my choice. There are two rigs that I use for the vast majority of my fishing. Now my go-to rig is a multi-rig, and this is pretty versatile. It works over all sorts of lake beds, and it's pretty well suited to a hard bottom as well. If I feel like I should have had a bite on that, and I haven't, then I'll switch to a bottom bait rig, a simple blowout rig. Now both rigs I keep fairly short, the beauty of a hard bottom is that you can use a short rig and this increases how effective they are mechanically. There's a couple of things we can do to maximise the efficiency of our rigs and the way that we're fishing on these clear spots. Now first of all, I see a lot of people using quite long rigs. We've already taken away the presentation issue by choosing a hard area to fish. So that allows us to use a shorter hook link and a heavier lead and maximise the efficiency of that rig. Secondly, if possible, I will choose where to place my rig on the spot and this means not placing it in the middle. If you can, try and make sure that your rig is somewhere around the edge, whether it's the left or right hand edge of the spot or at the front or the back. The fish will often be a little bit more suspicious of something right in the middle and more comfortable to feed around the periphery and around the edge of the clear area. And lastly, really pay attention to pinning your rig down and making sure your line's inconspicuous where it's leaving the spot. It's very unforgiving for your rigs fishing on a harder area. There's nothing to disguise them or hide them. It's all on show. If the line's lifted up off the bottom, the carp will be able to detect it. So I always use a big bit of putty. I use a sinking leader and I prefer an inline lead setup which sits flush with the lake bed. So let me talk you through my lead and leader setup. It's really easy to tie really simple and I'm using it with both the rigs that I'm going to show you today. So I've got a metre and a half of Klingon leader to which I have attached drop off style and inline lead and that will vary between two or three ounces. Now that lead shouldn't come off in the battle unless it hits some sort of obstacle or obstruction so I tend to get the lead back. My lead is attached loop to loop style to a double ring swivel and that leaves me another of the rings to attach my rig to. One thing to note is at the end of my leader I tend to put a big blob of putty and that's to ensure that that end is pinned down and isn't lifted up by the line and the tension of the line. So my go-to rig in a lot of situations and on hard bottoms is a multi-rig. Very, very easy to tie, very, very simple. And my favourite part is that you can change the hook. You don't have to change the whole rig. So if the hook point does turn over, or you can't sharpen it to your liking, then yeah, you can simply change it. First of all, you take a length of skin link, around about 12 inches, and you tie an overhand loop in each end. Now, one end is for attaching the hook, and the other end is for attaching to the lead. So at the hook end, you want the loop to be small, as that will dictate the height that your pop-up sits off the bottom. And on a hard bottom, I want that to be a low pop-up, so I'm tying a small loop. Second loop, slightly larger, and that's to pass the rig through when I'm attaching it to the swivel loop-to-loop -loop style. That doubled over section adds a little bit of stiffness which helps kick the bait away from the lead. Once I've tied my two loops, I take a stripping tool and I make a small break in the coating below the small loop and that will allow the rig to flex and move at that pivot point. I take a size five chod twister and a three millimeter bore bead, and slide the three millimeter bore bead onto the hook. Taking my chod twister, I pinch the small loop together and push it through the eye. Then I slide on the bait screw and then you can slip the loop over the top of the hook to secure the rig. I'll adjust the bore bead so it's roughly in line with the point of the hook so it sits just perfectly ready to hook the fish. Lastly, I'll add a little bit of putty to the break and that will sink your pop up. I don't critically balance it too much. I want it to sink reasonably quickly because those fish, as they're moving and feeding, they can kick the bait about and I want it to be anchored down. Your next choice after your rig is your hook bait, and this is quite important, the colour of your hook bait and the size of it. Now, on my multi-rig, I tend to vary between just two or three different hook bait choices, and that'll be my standard Scopex squid, a pink citrus one, or very occasionally an orange one. Now, the advantage of that pop-up hook bait is that often you get quick bites, and this really worked well for me on the wool pack last year. Got a lot of quick bites where the fish came in, and obviously the pop-up was the first thing that they took. Sometimes that pop-up's like a red flag to the carp though, you know, it stands out a little bit too much and if they're a bit suspicious, they'll avoid it. 
in which case I'll opt to use a bottom bait. And I think it's a good um, thing to bear in mind that if you think you should have had a bite and you haven't, then you need to change something. And for me, that'll be the change that I make first. For those occasions when I want to fish a bottom bait, a wafter or a snowman rig, I'll use a simple blowout or blowback rig. Now, this is something that Nashi used and made famous on our DVDs about a decade ago. And I use pretty much the same rig, I just tie it a little bit shorter than he does. First of all, I take about 10 inches of skin link and I'll use a stripping tool to strip half of it. So that's take the coating off half of it. In the strip section, I'll use a bait needle to tie a small overhand loop. Now this small loop will help to retain the hair when you've put the hook bait on. Once I've tied the loop, I'll take a small piece of blowout tubing and I'll slide it up the hook link. I then take a size four or size five long shank twister and I will mount that through the blowout tubing. I can then tie the rig knotless knot style and I'll finish it off by tying an overhand loop at the other end. This overhand loop will be used to attach it loop to loop style to the swivel. About half to two thirds of the way down the rig, so about an inch from the hook, I'll add a small piece of putty and that will help the rig to turn. Hook bait choice when I'm bottom bait fishing is pretty straightforward as well. I'll either use a snowman, a couple of bottom baits out of the bag, a cultured hook bait or even a couple of tigers out of my mix. Well, time for me to reel in and go home. I hope uh, the information was helpful. I hope it gave you a little bit of understanding on how to fish and get the best results on hard bottoms. <laughs>